the mirror. The next time you're alone in your room, turn down the lights. Think of something on your body that varies in length, such as hair. They must be clearly viewable from your perspective. Grab a ruler and, looking in the mirror, quickly grab a hair at random. You must confuse it. Hold it in position as best as you can and note the length. Look down. Yours will be different. Don't look back up. Don't turn your back to that mirror ever again. The Closet Open your closet. Don't turn on the light. Make sure you have one match with you. Step inside and close the door. If the lights outside the closet are on, this will not work. Nor will it work if it's daylight. The only room you need is enough for slight mobility. Stand inside the darkness for about two minutes, since that's all that's needed. Now, take the match and hold it in front of you and say, Show me the light, or leave me in darkness. If you begin hearing whispers, light the match immediately. If you don't hear anything, and the match doesn't ignite on its own, then don't turn around. If you light the match too late, or not at all after hearing whispers, something will grab you from behind and pull you into what seems like a forever fall into darkness. If you do manage to light the match in time and nothing happens after, open the door slowly and get out. Then close the door, but do not look inside. From then on, never look inside your closet without the light on at all. Some say if you leave your closet open during the night, you can see the demon watching you with two red eyes that glow like matches. Messages It's early in the morning. The sun will be up for another couple of hours. You're fast asleep in bed, lost in a dream. When the phone rings, Rather than waking up, you roll over and cover your head with a pillow. Hours pass. The sun rises. The phone is ringing. When you wake up, your alarm clock is blaring and the phone is ringing. By the time you will yourself to turn the alarm off, the phone has stopped ringing. You realize that it's been ringing all morning. You slide out of bed and press the blinking red button on your phone as you slide into the bathroom. The phone beeps followed by the friendly, electronic voice. Hello. You have 666 new messages. Message 1. The phone beeps again, and you're not prepared for what comes next. Screaming. You spin around, thinking that she's standing right behind you. There's pure terror in her screams, accompanied by other disturbing noises. You stand there, horrified, for about ten seconds. The screaming gives way to hysterical, garbled crying before dying out with sounds of spilling meat and tearing flesh. The phone beeps again. You're shaking. Message two. Angel. A few years ago, a mother and father decided they needed a break, so they wanted to head out for a night on the town. They called their most trusted babysitter. When the babysitter arrived, the two children were already fast asleep in bed, so the babysitter just got to sit around and make sure everything was okay with the children. Later that night, the babysitter got bored and went to watch TV, but she couldn't watch it downstairs because they did not have cable downstairs. The parents didn't want children watching too much garbage. So, she called them and asked them if she could watch cable in the parents' room. Of course, the parents said it was okay, but the babysitter had one final request. She asked if she could cover up the angel statue outside the bedroom window with a blanket or cloth. At the very least, close the blinds because it made her nervous. The phone line was silent for a moment. 
and the father who was talking to the babysitter at the time said, Take the children and get out of the house. We will call the police. We do not have an angel statue. The police found all three of the house occupants dead within three minutes of the call. No angel statue was ever found.